Hello, and welcome to an SJ Brothers uh, lecture video. But uh, for this video, I'm going to be talking about pyridoxal phosphate and its mechanism. And a little history on pyridoxal phosphate? Well, no, not really. It is vitamin B6, just so you know. And it's pretty cool. Got my laser pointer, and let's start. So, first things first, you have to recognize the motifs and try to understand what is happening in the mechanism itself, because uh, otherwise uh, memorization is not really going to help you. Um, so, just got to say that. So, all PLP reaction mechanisms involve shift-based formations and bond cleavage and quinonoid intermediate structures, which I would um, go into detail a little bit more as we go through the mechanisms. Shift-based formations, I will give a quick review of that, just in case you do not remember. And from organic chemistry, or so, they are otherwise known as amines, amines with an I, and, uh, but they form typically when you have an aldehyde or a ketone, um, reacting with the primary amino uh, group. In this case, for PLP, it's going to be an epsilon amino group. Fine. But in general, it's an, it's an amino group. And they form this planar shift base, which is highly reactive. And uh, it can also be protonated when, and that forms uh, a conjugate acid, which is protonated. Okay. Transamination via PLP. So, uh, that's the main fo focus of this video, actually, because there are multiple um, things that PLP actually uh, takes place in or has a, has a function in. And uh, for this case, is transamination. And transamination just basically results... Um, and a keto acid becoming uh, an amino acid, very important. And um, what it does, it transfers the amino alpha amino group of an amino acid to a keto acid, and you form a new amino acid and form a new keto acid. Okay, so in the active site of uh, transaminase, which does transamination, uh, it is it forms a shift based linkage with a lysyl residue. Uh, more specifically, like before, an epsilon amino group. Okay. So uh, for my mechanisms, I'm going to ignore the phosphate, uh, going to ignore the methyl, and I'm going to ignore the hydroxyl, and just focus on the ring and the uh, amino group attached, whatever else. Okay, it's just easier that way. So here is the full 12-step mechanism that I did, and uh, should be correct. Uh, and um, you could do it in more steps, or you could do it in less steps. But I found 12 steps to be convenient. So, here are some parts of the mechanisms that I think will help you as you actually do the mechanism. Just as, to serve like as placeholders or memory uh, kickstarters. So, if you're going in the forward direction of the mechanism, that is changing, uh, get, rem removing an amino group from an amino acid and transferring that to a keto acid, this is, you would find yourself forming these two structures. And uh, just notice that the lysine residue in this structure has a positive charge, while in the next structure it doesn't. It has just a lone pair. Well, these are just, again, amniotic structures. You might not need to know them, but just, okay, you do need to know them for the mechanism. But, um, you might not need to actually remember, you might just find yourself forming these structures. But they're good to just know. Um, 
the resonance structures now that's important because that's the whole real I guess the highlight of the mechanism and basically they form quinonoid intermediate structures which are uh, resonance stabilized structures and it's stabilized because it reforms its aromaticity of that ring by well this nitrogen forms as an electron sink and can kick back out that nitrogen uh, sorry kick back out that electron and yeah okay and then we have the pyridoxamine phosphate now this to me is like a halfway point of the mechanism itself and it's a good um memory kickstarter as i call it um so at this point you are halfway through the mechanism when you form this structure this is when it is taking the alpha amino group of an amino acid and it's on the PLP itself, the ring. All right. So, mm, with my uh, little diseased uh, PLP, we start the mechanism. Uh, okay, so in the active site, like I said before, it forms this amine, um, amine linkage or shift based linkage with a lysine residue, PLP, lysine residue of the active site. And the lone pair of an alpha amino group on an amino acid uh, attacks this electrophilic carbon. And as a result of that, it kicks out electrons from this double bond, which attach itself to this hydrogen uh, of the alpha amino group. And the electrons between the nitrogen and hydrogen form a lone pair again. And you have your first product, which is that diamino structure that I showed you before. So at this point, you are starting the mechanism. And you will form something similar again, the lysine with the lone pair this time, and the nitrogen uh, with a positive charge when you're getting towards the end of the mechanism. So, uh, the lone pair of this uh, alpha amino group, or the nitrogen specifically, uh, forms an imine, and as a result of that, kicks out this lysine residue. And due to that, we have uh, a free lysine residue. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So the lysine residue. The nitrogen of that lysine uh, attacks the hydrogen of the alpha carbon of the amino group, amino acid rather, and that causes electrons to move around. So we form this, well, this will form an imine here, double bond. This double bond will move downwards to this carbon. And as, as a result of that, the electrons move around the ar aromatic ring and they fall towards this nitrogen, which we call an electron sink. As a result of that, we form this quinonoid intermediate, which is resembles quin um, quinone so that's why it's called a quinonoid structure just because of the quinone similarity um, the lone pairs uh, formed the electrons that were taking uh, fell into the ring are then kicked back out of the ring and leave at this carbon which I'll say is like the central carbon and that electron attacks uh, hydrogen from the protonated uh, lysine residue and the electrons from this hydrogen move to form another lone pair on the lysine uh, on the nitrogen okay hope you're going along uh, you can always rewind the video if something didn't make sense uh, so now we have this lysine base again and, but this time, the lone pairs of this nitrogen attack a water molecule in the active site and deprotonates it. This hydroxyl that's now left attacks the imine base formed 
from um, yeah the imine base with uh, formed with this amino acid. It kicks out the double bond, well one bond of the double bond, and a lone pair sits on this nitrogen. Okay. So now we have the hydroxyl attached to the alpha carbon of the amino acid, and um, to now form a ketone, uh, a keto. Yeah, keto group. The lone pair that was just transferred to this nitrogen are now going to attack this hydrogen, and the electrons from that oxygen to hydrogen bond are now used to make that double bond with this carbon, which forms a ketone. That ketone kicks out this nitrogen, and we now have what I like to call our half, uh, our halfway point and this is the pyridoxamine phosphate that I was talking about earlier so now we have that free a free keto acid and now we want to make a keto acid an amino acid so the lone pair of this nitrogen now attacks the electrophilic carbon of this keto acid, a new one, and um, as a result of that we form this tetrahedral uh, intermediate, and here's the keto group now become a hydroxyl group, because this took a hydrogen from the uh, from the alpha amino group, of the, uh, actually from the amine, amine group of this so we took that hydrogen, reformed the lone pair, that's the lone pair here, and uh, yeah, so we have that. Now, the lone pairs that were uh, taken from this hydrogen can now try to form an imine again, and that imine causes this bond to be released and kicks out this hydrogen, uh, this hydroxyl group, which takes back its hydrogen from the lysine residue. I know, it can be a little confusing, but if you stay on track, you should be able to follow, hopefully, and hopefully I'm doing a good job. Um, so, let's keep going. Um, so we have this, for after, ta after this hydroxyl is deprotonated, the protonated uh, lysine residue, uh, we have a deprotonated lysine residue. Now we have lone pairs on the nitrogen here. So, uh, as a result of that, these electrons can attack the hydrogen on the central carbon. Okay. And when it attacks the hydrogen of the central carbon, we have the electrons moving around again towards um, the electron sink of this nitrogen, this nitrogen. And here is our amine, our double bond between nitrogen and carbon, formed here, a result of that amine base forming and kicking out this hydroxyl. Just review. Um, all right. Okay, and we're going down this time. So, we have this protonated uh, lysine residue, again, it's taken the, it's taken the, um, let's get to a better one, it's taking the uh, hydrogen from this central carbon that I want to call central carbon, and uh, the, we form that quinoid uh, intermediate structure, and the structure, the electrons, that fell into the electron sink kicked back out the electrons, but this time the electrons don't go back and attack any hydrogen from this central carbon. Rather, they form an imine, or rather, like uh, a double bond with this nitrogen. As a result of that, the bond here actually takes the hydrogen back, so it's kind of replacing where the hydrogen was and puts it in this. Uh, puts it on the alpha 
alpha uh, amino alpha carbon of this amino acid okay so we're almost done this lysine residue that has lost its hydrogen again attacks this amine or double this double bond carbon to nitrogen and um, the the bond here moves towards this hydrogen and takes that hydrogen off and reforms the lone pair on that nitrogen. Okay. All right. So we formed our diamine uh, structure again. So we have. Remember what I told you. We have the lone pair on this lysine now, and then we have the positive charge on this uh, amino, well, soon to be amino acid. And so we form the lysine residue of the active site forms another shift base linkage, and that double bond kicks out this newly formed amino acid right here. So we have this newly formed amino acid. Here's our water molecule, here's our keto acid, new formed keto acid, and we reformed our initial uh, lysine um, shift base linkage to the PLP. Uh, and that's the end of the mechanism for transamination. All right, hope this was helpful. Please let me know, uh, comment, and like. And I would see if I could do another video like this soon. Okay, thank you.